that's much better, better than that. It's much better. Okay. Um, so welcome, everyone. Um, today, I want to tell you about education. Uh, and what I'm trying to do is to foster a few provocative questions about what education um, should be about. And um, part of the title of the talk is why it is right to encourage people to get it wrong. I'm a firm believer in, in errors, and I think for a good education to happen, people need, need um, to make um, errors. There's three times to my talk. First, I want to reflect on what education has become. Uh, and I'll tell you about how you know, we talk about an education revolution uh, with things like Coursera and uh, you know, all the, you know, the TEDx, the wiki stage that gets you knowledge. But you know, how does it, uh, what does it tell us about education and what it's become? Uh, then I want to tell you about something I feel is important, and it's the mission of education institution. And that thing is about educating independent learners. And in order to do so, I'll tell you that one of the best ways to do so is to actually tell people that they should make errors and uh, learn from their uh, errors. And we'll talk about some of the famous discoveries uh, and how actually they came uh, from errors. And the last thing, um, we'll be reflecting together, and I hope it will sp spark some interesting discussions and questions about um, what should education do to move forward and to be able to foster a better um, experience um, and foster an education that uh, educates independent uh, learners. Um, let's start reflecting on what education um, has become uh, these days and what should 21st century education uh, be about. What's interesting is education hasn't been always uh, the way you know it, with a big lecture a theater uh, and, um, the, uh, and, and actually the university. Um, if you go back to the first universities, uh, they were actually not proper universities. Uh, people would pay teachers, people would pay uh, lecturers individually, and they would often meet at someone's place, but there was not proper, no proper facilities. Um, this is actually the word university was first referred to, uh, refer to the place where all these people that were students, as they were called um, still already back in the days, uh, would um, actually meet. Uh, and what's interesting is if you, even if you look back at the literature and what people were saying about uh, students in the 13th and 14th century, they had a reputation for debauchery and drinking. We haven't invented much on that end, I think. Uh, and then, you know, um, education started changing. It became bigger and bigger and bigger. And quickly different models of education emerged. There was the top-down model where you'd pack tons of students in an amphitheater uh, and uh, basically one person that would know would deliver um, knowledge or what is thought um, to be knowledge. Um, and then there were other types of models of education that were maybe um, a bit more bottom-up where actually students would be encouraged to participate, students would be encouraged to discuss, to bring on uh, their own ideas. Uh, so for instance, um, at Oxford University or uh, Cambridge University, you've got what they call tutorials, and it's a kind of one-to-one -one or a two, um, one professor to one student or one professor to two students, and students are actually leading the discussion. Uh, and that's the first interesting reflection uh, on uh, what education should be about. Who should be give it, giving out uh, the knowledge? Should it come top down from professors, or should it come bottom up from students reenacting, rediscovering um, knowledge? There's in between, for instance, uh, in most UK universities, you've got differences between lectures and seminars. So lectures when uh, your professor lectures and gives you the, the knowledge, uh, and seminars where actually you're um, asked and invited as students um, to um, discuss. Now, you've probably heard about this, but this is meant to be the big revolution. Um, What's happening? Well, you've got companies, uh, most of them not for profit, but some for profit, edX, Coursera, and so on, um, that deliver knowledge and spread knowledge around the world. Now, is this 21st century education? Um, it's been shaking or taking uh, the industry by surprise because for many um, people um, that were in the education sectors, people were saying, why should people pay for education when you can uh, actually get uh, knowledge um, online and most of the time for free? And I think this um, makes us, or means that it should make us ask two important questions. Is what do we mean by knowledge? What is knowledge? Is it simply just learning facts? Um, is it simply uh, reading a book? Or is there something else to knowledge? Now, I often tell my students that if you want knowledge, I'm probably the worst source of knowledge because I'm a human being, therefore I'm limited. What I bring is more than knowledge, it's interaction, it's feedback. It's being able to show you what the, I would say, um, the, the true meaning of uh, knowledge um, is. Um, the other question is, where does knowledge come from? Is it something that only comes from book? Or is it something um, that comes um, from uh, experience? Um, and more generally speaking, 
This leads me to ask a question, which is, I think it's a fundamental one, and I'm sure we're going to debate it in our discussion part, is what is education about? Is it about teaching um, knowledge and facts to students? So is it about edX or Coursera, like um, I've said before? Um, is it about selecting and assessing students? That's another interesting thing. It seems that part of what education has become is about putting a label. And I mean, you know, all of you this in this room today studying at the top business school probably are at that business school because of the label that you will uh, get from it. Uh, and we've seen things like the Shanghai ranking, you know, Times Higher Education ranking, that certainly makes us feel that maybe there is a dimension of education uh, that is about that. Um, but perhaps um, education is also simply about uh, enabling students, people that are in education, to become independent um, learners. And in that context, I would like to switch now to the second part of my talk, uh, which is to think about how people can learn uh, from errors. Uh, and the example I'll come back on, but is the idea that you know, if you want to learn from your errors, some environments, some schools have things like incubators that allow you to try and learn uh, what you do. Um, let's think about a, famous, uh, a few series of famous examples. Um, this is uh, penicillin invented by Fleming. Um, what is great about penicillin, it was a complete mistake. You probably know the story, it's a famous one. A Scottish scientist go on holidays, leaves a, um, a piece of like food, it was a sandwich of some sort, that uh, got rotten. There was a fungus that developed. When he came back to his lab, he noticed something. He was working on staphylococ, and staphylococ, the bacteria, had disappeared. It was an accident. He, without knowing it, had invented the first anti Biotic. Um, and Fleming, commenting on his discovery, said, when I woke up just after dawn on September 28, 1928, I certainly didn't plan to revolutionize all medicine by discovering the world's first antibiotic or bacteria killer, but I guess that's exactly what I did. Um, and penicillin is just among many examples that actually were invented by accident. Uh, the microwave was invented by someone that was working on radars, uh, and he was trying to invent um, stuff and technologies that would help him to improve radars. But on manipulating one of uh, his invention, he started noticing um, a heat pocket in his uh, pants. And that was a chocolate bar that was starting to melt. And suddenly he realized right away the potential of his invention. Not great for radars, but this became the microwave and saved uh, the life of many snackers uh, and people that are single, I guess. Um, Play-Doh, that's another interesting example. It was first used as a wall cleaner. That was something that was used to clean the wall, to clean um, tapestry, um, and guess what? It was not really working great. It was not a great product. But what happened is that kids love it, and they started to form ornaments at school. Um, and the company that was making Play-Doh was about to go bankrupt, and they had one last try, which is to remove the cleaning ingredient, to change the smell and add colors. And Play-Doh became what it is, and saved the company uh, from bankruptcy. Uh, these are only a few. I mean, the post-it note. Um, someone invented a glue that was way not strong enough. It was so not strong enough that you could always, you know, tack it and untack it and tack it and untack it. Put it on a piece of paper, suddenly it changed, um, you know, people's life. The other, the other extreme. Someone invented a glue that just stuck to everything. It was a nightmare, useless, until they found actually a use for it. Uh, Teflon, another example of something that was invented by mistake. Even Viagra was actually invented by mistake. Um, it was actually a cardiovascular drug. Um, and people, re you know, when you do medicine, you always have to report side effects. And there was a specific side effect that was reported. I'm not going to mention here today. Uh, but that became and made the success uh, of um, this drug. Um, it's not only just about science. Um, cooking, um, this is the tart tata invented by mistake. Champagne and the method, the uh, method champenoise, was also invented by mistake. Uh, the first bottles exploded, but that's uh, when people discovered the fermentation uh, in the bottle. Uh, and even this is a sweet from the north of France that is called the bêtise, the mistake. Um, so there are endless examples about you know, why um, errors and mistakes are, are interesting and can lead to discoveries. But coming back to education, this is a quote from a Nobel Prize winner, Albert, um, I'm not going to pronounce that name, um, but it says um, a discovery um, is said to be an accident that meets a prepared mind. And this is where education comes in. Accidents and prepared mind. Education should be about preparing the mind of people so that when they encounter an accident, they actually can reflect on it and discover new things. 
It's very important because you don't just discover things, you don't just learn because you make mistakes. But if you've learned how to prepare yourself and react to good mistakes, then you can actually make uh, great discoveries. Um, your brain actually loves to make mistakes. Uh, my background is in psychology, um, and there's a lot of um, evidence that shows that your brain reacts in a very different way when it does something right than when it does something wrong. And by evolution, we've developed an aversion to risk and an aversion to failure, which means that every time we fail, we actually try not to replicate that again. So we learn a lot by making mistakes. Um, kids, they actually learn walking by falling and then coming back and trying to avoid falling because they know that when they fall, they actually hurt themselves. Um, learning languages, you also learn languages by you know, being constantly told what is right, what is wrong, and when you make mistakes, um, you um, learn uh, from these. Now, based on this reflection about making mistakes, um, the final point that I want to uh, develop in this talk is what can education go to actually leverage um, from that? Now, starting with a provocative question, um, when was the last time that education actually rewarded um, students' errors? Um, I don't think there's many occasions you know, in which students are actually allowed or even encouraged to make mistakes. Um, and I think this is wrong, and I think this is problematic um, in many ways. Uh, let me tell uh, you some of the things that I think are potential problems uh, with education. Um, first of all, is education really training people uh, to be independent uh, learners? Well, I don't think so. I think we created a system in which people get obsessed with grades. They think that they really have to always get the best grade. And I mean, you know, I'm not blaming it on the students because the system um, is such. But I think, I think it should help us to reflect and react to the fact that we've moved away from people being freely engaged in learning because everyone is focusing on grades. Um, universities for ranking their students, employees to employees for um, hiring their students. Um, another interesting uh, question, I think, um, is that or, or consequence is that students play it safe. And I mean, fair enough. When you're in a system where you know you know that um, I would say risk will not be rewarded, why should you actually take any risk? But as we've seen, you can learn a great deal uh, from these. So I think it's a shame. Uh, norms, you know, accreditations and so on. They're great, um, they give you quality and they give you stability, but they're also the first one that do restrict creativity. Because every time you're designing a new course, you have to stick to certain rules, which means that if you want to do something a bit more original that would actually encourage creativity or errors and learning from it, this would not be possible. Um, and the last one I think that, uh, the what last thing I think that took us away from training independent researchers is that there's been a focus on pure academic research. Um, instead of actually trying to blend our academic experience, our academic experience as researchers, with um, what students uh, want to learn is knowledge, but also engaging with their knowledge to um, discover new, new ways of seeing the world. Um, so what can we do as um, education providers to uh, improve the current state of things? Um, well, I think there's several things we could do. First of all, start getting away from too many grades. Go for a pass or fail a proposal in which there is a, th a threshold that would be quite high in order to pass. But once you pass it, you don't need to worry about where, uh, where you stand. Uh, some universities actually do that. Harvard University, not the worst university in the world, actually allow quite a few students um, and, um, in, in most of their programs and departments to choose on which courses they want to be assessed on a pass-fail or they want to be assessed with a full grade. And I think it's a very wise way of assessing because I think once you remove the pressure of a grade for every course, you've got a lot to gain in order to let people um, experiment. Now, the other thing that we could do is, you know, get away from what I call the tyranny of the syllabus. The syllabus needs to rule everything from the first session to the last session, uh, and this often prevents creativity uh, in the classroom. Uh, and I think, again, this is where you see the advantage of accreditation is that they regulate everything, but I think the drawback is that they also sometimes make things too rigid. Um, how should we be grading? That's another thing, you know, given that for me grading is one of the big things that prevent people and students from uh, making mistakes. I think we should move away from purely grading the um, outcome, but grading the process. How do people learn and how do they learn? Do they learn well uh, or do they not uh, learn well? Encouraging students to learn from other disciplines is, for instance, something we do uh, in the Bachelor in Management. Um, and the last thing that I think is important is worst practices are, are, are as important as best practices. We often um, talk about what goes well, but we should also talk about what doesn't uh, go well. So in terms of conclusion, 
Um, I think it's important for education to go back to the aim, the core aim, which is educating independent learners. Um, and as knowledge becomes widely accessible, I think it's important to go back to educating people and give them critical thinking skills. Making mistakes and learning from them um, is the real best way um, for students to get the most uh, education and most out of their education. Thank you very much.